Um, all right. Going out west, I'll start us off this time. Um, uh, I'm going to say this. A lot of people picking the Thunder. A lot of people picking the Thunder. I think the Thunder are going to disappoint this year. I'm just going to come out and say it. Wow. I think they're, they're going to disappoint this year. Really? Now, now not in standings-wise, but playoff-wise. I think they're going to disappoint again. Interesting. I am not as high on the Thunder, which... This is just like a, I'm reading the tea leaves. Everyone's super high on them. And I don't know. I, I just, I think we, they really, really flamed out last year and they got better for sure. But I don't know about this team. I just don't. So I don't have them one. I have Minnesota one. I am so high on Minnesota. I have talked my into the DiVincenzo Randall moves being great. I have talked myself into DiVincenzo having a, like a crazy year because of how like that, how weird he was in the preseason game at the garden. I have talked myself into Ant Edwards taking the next step. I have talked myself into Nas Reed playing like Derek white in the sense of like, he's going to really take leaps and bounds and get better. I have talked myself into somehow that go bear is just gonna to like be not as good, but that's going to be okay. They won't need him to be good because they're going to play a little bit faster, have a little more, you know, more weapons on the team and not have to grind it out. So yeah, I I'm very high on Minnesota. I, I think they're, I, and I think they're hungry. I think they flamed out last year against Dallas. They should have won that series and didn't. And I think they're back for more. Interesting. I, I went chalk Oklahoma city. Number one, they were the number one seed last year. Their best player is not a serious injury risk and their second and third best players are 20, two and 23 years old, I believe, uh, Chet and Jalen Williams. They made two perfect role player acquisitions this off season, getting Caruso and Hardenstein deepest roster in the West. Not probably not the best player in the West, but top three player in the West in all likelihood. I just think, listen, they won the regular season crown. Like they had the most wins in the regular season last year and they certainly improved. I think they approved more than some of the teams below them improved. OKC at one, but have, I'll go to two now. Yeah, I, I have, have Minnesota at two, and I have Oklahoma State okay. too. I said so then we flip flop. But, fine, but. I, I'm not going to say this is like a kind of agreement between us because I think OKC is going to run away with the West. I could see them being like 63, 62, and then Minnesota at like 57. So I, I could see a real gap between OKC and the rest of the Western Conference. You certainly. Do not see it that way. But I, I guess we both have them one and two. Who do you have at three? This might surprise some people. I have Dallas three. I think okay. Dallas is coming back for more. I think Dallas, though I, I shit on Mavericks fans and Mavericks Twitter, I think they made moves to improve where they need to. And here's the thing. I hate to spoil a segment later in the show. Or I hate to spoil uh, a separate video. Oklahoma City will not make it out of the conference semifinals. They will not get out of the conference semis. Dallas is better than they were. And Dallas finds ways to win basketball games. And that's what you need in the NBA playoffs. Oklahoma City is young, haven't had a lot of playoff experience, so they naturally have not shown me that. Dallas finds ways to win. Luka took a bad team to the Western Conference Finals a few years ago. And this team that played the Celtics was not very good. The fact that all the pundits thought they would beat Cel the Celtics is a crime yeah, that, that was the a joke. media that was a is joke. still paying for today. But Dallas improved. They got better. Now, the big question mark in the whole thing is, is Luka fat? Like, is Luka going to be able to hold <laughs> up? And history would say... Kind of, yeah. Like he, he'll figure mm -hmm. it out. Kyrie's still there. I do think Clay Thompson's washed, but they don't need Clay Thompson to be anything more than 13 points a night, which is basically a little bit more than PJ Washington gave you. I think they upgraded where they needed to upgrade. I I think that um their bigs, though I shit on them last year, are good players. And I think they're a tough team. I, I just their playoff run though I'm happy the Celtics beat the shit out of them and they had no shot and it was embarrassing for them. Their playoff run out West was impressive. And I don't think that should be forgotten. Similar to how Indiana is three in the East. I have Dallas three in the West. 
that's not a crazy take. I'm not totally in agreement that they got significantly better. The clay is a good piece. I'm not sure how valuable he's going to be. Cause I mean, if you're closing games with a lineup of clay, Kyrie and Luca, that could pose some serious problems, especially because you don't have an OG Ananobi caliber wing defender and Derek Lively might eventually turn into an elite rim protector, but he's not a Gobert, Wemby, Anthony Davis level guy. He's very good and excellent for a rookie second year player. Um, Number three, I have Denver. It's just really difficult to say that the best player in the world isn't going to be a top three seed. I'm I'm very concerned about their potential championship chops, uh, losing KCP for nothing, Calvin Booth having uh, a chronic case of the Masai Ujiri high on his own supply disease. Ah, oh, no, we'll just develop our guys in-house. Julian Straw, they're Christian Brown. They can do all this stuff that the guys we already had can do. Not entirely sure they can, but at the end of the day, they have Nikola Jokic. So I'm putting them at three. Four, I'm going to go. This is where, not a huge surprise, but at number four, I have Memphis. Coming out of nowhere, baby. The Memphis Grizzlies are back. They took a year off. They got Jack Eady. Um, he looks fantastic in the preseason so far, man. He looks really, really, really good against the Pacers. And as I said in my TikTok, this was not the the Mad Ants. This was not the G League affiliate. He was going up against Isaiah Jackson and Miles Turner, the starting center and backup center for the Pacers, and he looked dominant. He looks in better shape. Defensively, he's moving his feet a lot better than he did at Purdue. They're not going to ask him to shoot the ball as much as he shot in the preseason, but He's just, he's instantly going to be like a better version of Steven Adams with a hell of a lot more offensive upside as well. So I, and you listen, last year was a year from hell for them. And this year's kind of starting off as a year from hell. I mean, Gigi Jackson's already injured. Jaron Jackson is expected to be back for the start of the regular season, but he's already dealing with injuries. I think we all forgot just how good John Morant is to steal a line from our boy, Noah Eagle. I think we all forgot how good Ja is. Desmond Bain, one of my favorite players in the league. And, and Vince Williams, again, another guy that they found last year who's already hurt. Man, what's going on in Memphis with these injuries? Maybe they got the... It's the barbecue. Yeah. They, <laughs> they got the old 2021-2022 uh, New York Mets training staff dealing with injuries. But Memphis is just a really good team, and last year was a disaster. I think they're going to bounce back. I'm intrigued to see if Marcus Smart stays on this Memphis team. Um, I'd be surprised. I'd be surprised. Will, it's a bit I of will, a clunky fit. I will say that. Um, so for my fourth, I had Denver. So I went mm-hmm. Dallas, Denver. I completely agree with you. I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about the supporting cast around Jokic. Again, Jamal Murray has not looked good in a while. Michael Porter Jr. does not look good. Aaron Gordon can win you games, but he can't be the number two. Uh, and their bench is just not very good, but it is Jokic. But the problem is there are some teams that just got better. And yeah, again, they didn't, I, unless one of these didn't. young guys take a huge leap, Dallas got better. Minnesota got better. Oklahoma city got better. Memphis got better. Like every other team in the West made palpable improvements. You could argue Denver Except, got worse. Yeah. There's a couple teams that got worse. We'll get to them in a sec, but uh, I have Denver four and then I had Memphis five. I agree with you. I'm, okay, I'm great. very high on Memphis coming into this year. We forgot how good jaw is. Zach Eady looks fantastic. This is a team also that finds ways to win. I think Memphis and Dallas are tough basketball teams. And I have Dallas at five. And um, I, I kind of agree with what you're saying now. I think they're both tough teams to find ways to win. I do not think Oklahoma city is a tough team. They will be tougher this year because I think Caruso and Hartenstein are, are tough players. Yeah. That gives, I do not think, some edge. I do not think Oklahoma city played tough last year. The local, you know, TV interviews after and stuff like that. I, that to me, I was like, I don't know, but Memphis, that's a tough team. Dallas, that's a tough team. And John Morant, is really, really good at basketball, and we have forgotten that. And it's going to be really cool to see what he does. And then Zach Eady is – Jack. He's going to be a problem. That's Jack a problem. O'Neal. That's a problem right there. That's a problem. So, yeah, yeah, I think Memphis is going to be a good team this year. Okay. We, we disagree a little bit on the order, but 
one through five, we all have the same five teams. Who right. do you have at six? Because I have Phoenix. I also have Phoenix. Uh, they'll be better. I think. Have you seen all the hype around UVA legend Ryan Dunn, who was one of the most prodigious defensive prospects in college basketball history, but also one of the most abhorrent offensive prospects in college basketball history. And now he's hitting threes. He's hitting threes in the preseason. I don't know what happened. I don't know if he broke free of Tony Bennett's curse at Virginia, but if, if he can become the competent offensive player, he's looked so far. I mean, Phoenix might be able to crack the top five. Yeah. I think getting Tyus Jones is good for that team. Mm -hmm. I also am going to base them off of Olympics vibes. I've never liked Devin Booker more. I thought book was great in the Olympics. I think Durant is obviously an all time player and showed that. And I don't know what Bradley Beal's got left. I don't, but listen, I said this when Ime and LeBron got into the fight. Actually, no, you said it. It's nothing more scary than someone with nothing to lose. Phoenix has nothing to lose this year. They're going in low expectations. Some of these guys, a couple years away from riding off into the sunset, they got absolutely nothing to lose. And that could be beneficial for them. So I have them six. I think they will be much better than they were last year. Just in terms, I know that's, I think they finished fifth last year. So it's ironic that I have them lower in the standings, but I think the West has just gotten better. And I think Phoenix will be better. They finished six last year, actually, because I remember Minnesota was three, and they played them in round one. Oh, you're um, right. I'm sorry. Seven. I'm going out on a limb with this one. Hit me. Houston. I have Houston at seven. I wanted to put Houston here. I want to hear why you have them here. I just think one through 11, 12, they're the best team in the league. They don't have a superstar, but they've got the 11 average. good yeah, the average NBA player on the Houston Rockets is better than any team because you got Fred, Jalen Green, who came on at the end of last year, Jabari, Dylan Brooks, even though I don't like Dylan Brooks very much. Now they got Steven Adams along with Alperin Shengun as big men. And then you add Reed Shepard, Amen Thompson, Tari Eason, Cam Whitmore. Those are 10, those are 10 legitimate NBA rotation players. And Celtics might be better overall, but I hear I, I agree with the sentiment, and they're close. Like they have a lot of good pieces uh, yeah, in there. Yeah, I would say their tenth man is probably better than the tenth man on any other team. And who is That's their tenth man? Stephen Adams. Yeah. Is there yeah. is their ninth man uh, Cam Whitmore or Tari Eason? I think that guy is better than the ninth man on probably every other team in the NBA. Yeah, I think you're right. Not championship upside, obviously. Fred's great, in my opinion, the most underrated player in the NBA. I love Fred, man. Big Fred guy. I know you are. Not not championship upside, but and they got a great coach. They great got coach. a great coach. And they remember they almost caught Golden State for the ten seed last year because Jalen Green couldn't stop scoring thirty eight points, and the Warriors were were almost tracked down at the end. Yeah, that was close. I do not have Houston seven. I do have them eight. So I'm I'm I agree with your sentiment. I have, you have Sacramento seven? seven. I think Sacramento. I always but defend Sacramento on this show. I like the beam. Listen, DeMar might, might be helpful for them. I think Sacramento at times could have used more of a veteran presence. And I think DeMar is going to help in that regard. A lot of good players there. They're a fun team to watch still. Um, obviously, I love De'Aaron Fox, big bonus, Malik Monk. So I just think their experience. And you could argue Sacramento's had a couple disappointing ends to their last two runs. And Maybe they're fired up this year. De'Aaron Fox is also a superstar that wasn't on the Olympic roster, so is, I'm assuming he's rested and he's ready to go. That's something that will be interesting to see is the guys that were on the Olympics rosters, how their bodies and how they fare coming into the year. Uh, but I have Sacramento, then I have Houston right after him at eight. Uh, eight. Sorry, had to do it. I have the Lakers. I'm – color me shocked – this is a team that didn't do anything in this offseason. Rob Palenka, general manager of the year, baby. Love it. it. LeBron and Anthony Davis are still unbelievable basketball players. I think the, the supporting cast is below average, but not terrible. It's not, you know, it's not abhorrent. D'Lo, Austin Reeves, Gabe Vincent, if he can get back to Miami, not a big fan. He can't. Of, he won't. <laughs> let's let's just stop. Not a now. big not a big fan of the forward rotation. Jared Vanderbilt's been dealing with multiple foot issues on both feet. 
Rui Hachimura is kind of limited. Um, I'm really excited to see what Bronny James does in like his first, you know, couple of games. I'm expecting anywhere between like 25, 30 points per game from Bronny. If he doesn't give you that, I don't really know how you can continue to run your offense through him, but I probably move him to like number two behind his dad. I mean, like, listen, if Bronny can run the offense like Luca as a rookie, great. Do I expect that? Uh, yes, he's that good. But if he doesn't, number two option would suffice. Who do you have number nine? <laughs> Didn't even want to engage with that bait. No, I respect I'm not, that. I'm not jumping in on that. Um, number nine, I have Golden State. Maybe, just maybe, they improved from last year. Maybe they improved. Addition by subtraction, perhaps. Maybe Draymond Green screws his head on straight this offseason, doesn't try to fight multiple people. Brandon Podjemski progresses another year. They got Buddy Heald. They got Kyle Anderson. They got DeAnthony Melton. Yes, they lose Clay, but it seemed like he was not only a weak basketball fit, but uh, uh, kind of a bit of a nudge in the locker room. Seems so, a little bit. This guy doesn't like Clay. He doesn't like him. It's not that I dislike Clay. He just seemed very perturbed all season long, and I think that was off putting for a lot of Warriors people. So I, I think they might have improved. But again, similar to the Lakers, I think they're good teams. And I think in 2014, they could contend for winning the conference. West is just too good. West is just too good now. You can't, you can't have LeBron AD and then a below average role player cast of, uh, below average cast of role players and expect to win the West. Sorry. West is too good. You're not wrong. And I also have Golden State nine. So I agree with you in that regard. Mm -hmm. I think they get a little and better. Then, they can seal games. Um, and then 10, 10, I have Sacramento. And I have the Lakers 10. So we just switched. Okay. Those. Um, I am so unimpressed with what the Lakers have done. They should be helping LeBron. They are harming LeBron. Um, I'm very unimpressed with their offseason. Interesting. So we both play. have the Clippers missing the play in entirely. Correct. I think that is a relatively consensus opinion at this point. A lot of people, a lot of people don't like the Clippers. Sleepy Kawhi Leonard one, doesn't one, like playing games. Kawhi goes down. It's all right. It's over. Like, it's, what are you talking about? When Kawhi goes down, he's already down. He's not playing in the preseason. <laughs> yeah. If Kawhi goes down again, it's over. Like I, I don't have faith in James Harden. I don't like that team's roster construction. That's a shame. That window shut pretty hard. Um, yeah. So real quick for me, and the Pelicans, I went, we both yeah. have the Pelicans missing the playoffs as well. That's an, that's an unserious organization. Um, so for me, I went Minnesota, Oklahoma City, Dallas, Denver, Memphis, Phoenix, Sacramento, Houston, Golden State, Lakers. Yeah, and then I went Oklahoma City, Minnesota, Denver, Memphis, Dallas, Phoenix as my one through six, and then seven Houston, eight Lakers, nine Warriors, ten Kings. Nice. All right. Good work, buddy. Good work.